Uh, good evening. And uh, it really depends on the country. And as we know, Europe is quite diverse in terms of um, the different strategies that have been taken and also the level of uptake that they've had for the COVID-19 vaccination. Um, at the regional level, uh, we've seen cases and deaths in Europe increased by over 55% in the past month. And, uh, and that's largely, in terms of the, the new cases, it's driven by population groups that remain susceptible to the disease, i.e. those who are not vaccinated. Um, a lot of the time in countries where vaccination uptake has been slower and has reached a plateau more, e more quickly. And uh, with the winter approaching, people moving indoors, uh, fewer uh, restrictions in place for meeting indoors. The virus has taken advantage of that very, very quickly and has moved through the population groups. And we're seeing now a very rapid increase in the older generations, which are those who will end up in hospital more frequently and unfortunately um, have more severe disease. And, um, and, and we all hoped that this winter would be easier than last winter. Um, but uh, given the complacency in some countries and given the very, very rapid um, transmission in countries with low vaccination uptake or not significant not significant vaccination uptake, um, the, the virus is just taking advantage of um, the situation that it's in. So um, we may face a, a tougher winter this year than we did last year. Well, a lot of countries that have had really high vaccine uptake have um, rightly um, started to loosen some of the restrictions that have been put in place. Um, and our position um, from WHO's perspective is that um, a lot of the preventive measures that um, prevent COVID but don't prevent normal life um, should continue to be in place because we've seen very rapid um, circulation of the virus even in countries that have had high vaccination because there are significant pools of people who remain susceptible. But that, of course, spreads, and that spreads to the countries that don't have that level of vaccination uptake. And when that happens, it hits the hard it hits hardest in those vulnerable groups. So we're talking about all of the same measures that we've had it, um, available to us, plus vaccination. And in combining different things at the community level, at the national level, through public health interventions, testing, tracing, um, making sure that people who have been exposed to the virus are able to quarantine with the resources that they need to do so. These are all the same things that we can be put in place to prevent these very nasty resurgences of COVID. And, and, and that may go part of the way in explaining why the rates are so different in France to what they are in the United Kingdom. Um, it can't only be explained through mask wearing, and but every little piece counts. And that's the whole point. We talk a lot about this Swiss cheese approach to protecting each other from, from the virus and protecting ourselves from the virus, where each measure contributes a small con contribution to keeping ourselves and others safe. Mask wearing is perfectly um, a, a good visible example and, uh, and certainly allows people to go about their business, um, to, to go to their work, to go to school, um, taking a very simple, cheap measure that has been proven in terms of um, uh, its ability to protect um, uh, against transmission of the virus, both from a source protection, but also from um, a transmission perspective. We've had 1 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered only in the European region. And that's a very significant amount. And it means that we have a huge amount of data upon which to make our recommendations that the vaccine is both safe and effective. Effective, of course, in saving lives from COVID and preventing people from ending up in hospital. So of course, um, vaccine hesitancy is, is is, is real, um, is an issue, and we are continuously engaging with um, different population groups, different religious groups, um, influential um, uh, people at the community level to, to get these messages across. Um, having said that, we don't only draw the line at vaccine hesitancy in terms of the bottleneck in Europe. There's also access issues. There are systemic issues. There are issues with the way the vaccine is um, brought to the people or reached out, um, the re outreach uh, systems that are in place. And what we're doing is working very much with the countries with low vaccine uptake to understand which of those particular groups that haven't had access to the vaccine yet and what are the reasons behind it, because it's not just vaccine hesitancy. In fact, a lot of people are very willing to get the vaccine, but there are some more practical challenges that also need to be um, addressed.